Thank you, Sarah, and, and hi, everyone. It's, it's a complicated lecture since it's, since it's all about make, trying to build a case on, on, on narrative. And this is something with which I would like to start, which is building the case on, on the power of narrative. Uh, since narrative might sound trivial to many of us and, and, and we don't find its, its, its sense as, as, as easy when talking about something as concrete as, as decentralized cooperation. So, so first of all, I would try to build a case on the power, on the transformative power, uh, power of, of the narrative and, and, and on finding tune between localizing the, the, the formal process of localization, but as well as the political process of what localizing means. And, and this is narrative. Narrative is the political uh, scope that can give us access to this leading transformation. And also, I would also say that narrative is the spirit the spirits of, of what we are doing, and this is how we link each of them. I will go now with this, with this uh, slide, and I will try to make you go directly to the SDGs principles and to the eight, measurable, because we tend to link SDGs with this. Uh, even though we all agree that we have a renewed social contract and, and that we talk about uh, leaving no one behind, when we talk about projects, specific things that we are doing in the territories related to the SDGs, we try to think, how do we measure to, to have access to finance, uh, to have access to grants, to report to my national government? So we, we, we normally tend to, to relate SDGs to reporting, monitoring, and not to the common narrative of leaving no one behind. When we talk about decentralized cooperation from, from our constituency, it's obvious that we are talking about solidarity, that we are talking about uh, the common good or, on public service delivery, as, as we were seeing in the, in, the, in the virtual lecture before. So what we try to do is to merge these narratives. And, and this is why we are doing them in two ways, one on principles and one on synergies. I will go to the synergies one uh, later on. Uh, so, so my case here is that SDGs are more than an indicator uh, system to measure development in the United Nations. They are in these principles. We normally tend to identify them with the identity, with the 17 colors, with the 70 logos, but they are, they are these, they are the principles based on experience, they are multidimensional and they have a powerful idea which uh, Jean-Baptiste was referring before, which is a game changer they are both from the North and the Global South. Uh, and, and this is crucial. Uh, this is how they link to, to the Busan principles. Even though we have that they are focused on results, the Busan principles, and, and that they need transparency and accountability, uh, they have a strong uh, ownership, development priorities, and developing countries component, which the SDGs have uh, also. So having said this, uh, we need to build a common narrative around this and the common narrative around them is localization and transformation. So if we go to the next slide, and, and this is where we'll see them as, as, as clear as it is, it is a transformative decentralized cooperation. It is in line with the SDGs. We always tend to say that city diplomacy is transformative and how do we make actionable this diplomacy? It is through decentralized cooperation and this means that decentralized cooperation is the transformation tool that we have to localize the SDGs. If we go through this link and if we make this case, it is trying to bridge between what donors and politicians in international level are negotiating through the actionable sphere of government, which is local and regional governments who are transforming the, which is, this is also important. We are not only transforming territories, we are transforming the agenda 2030 and the SDGs when we localize the agenda. It is giving the cross-cutting issue. It's, only, it's not only transformative in terms of assistential uh, practices in the territories, but it's also transforming from the bottom up the, the universal framework. I will go one by one to the, to the principles only to build a case. Uh, and this is also building the case in terms of, of where we are and where we stand. The SDGs are a universal framework. This is what we were uh, saying when talking about global south, uh, global south and, and, and north. Uh, they are also a roadmap. We, we, if we need to know that we have a pathway towards 2030 and beyond in terms of transforming uh, this practice and, and including new partners. 
they are a possibility of exchange, cooperation of knowledge, not only between local governments, but also inside the same government, between areas of the different uh, local and regional governments. They highlight foreign action of, 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 of our constituency. This, what we mean by this is that they bridge between local and international, which is something that we can facilitate through the networks, but as well through the projects. Uh, they highlight the need for states and international organization to provide our constituency with skills and resources. And I have to say that they also help us to advocate on this. Um, the agenda also calls for strengthening of data and collection and management, which is a reporting process, which is good to, uh, to attract donors, but as well to, to, to make local and regional governments more transparent and more accountable. And finally, it aims to, to improve monitoring and reporting systems, both nationally, locally, and, and, and internationally. And then we have uh, the decentralized corporation as a driver of, of localization, as I said before. And these are only facts to build a case. We all know that 70% of the targets of the SDGs uh, depend on local action. And, and the decentralized corporation is a way to transform how we tackle this action, which is through localization. Um, decentralized cooperation is a perfect space for, for a multi-partner and multi-stakeholder uh, engagement in the territorial level, uh, which is SDG 17 is the SDG that, that covers all, all the, the agenda. Uh, decentralized cooperation can help as well to raise local awareness, uh, to inform citizens, as, as Ludo was referring in the chat before, uh, which is one of, of the political exercises that we need to do if we want to meet the targets. Decentralized cooperation also promotes multi-level governance, uh, which is necessary uh, and, and it's 100% uh, localization process. And it also serves as a platform to, system, to systematize, share, learning, building capacities. And finally, it encourages motivation of both, I would say here, local leaders and, and, and citizens. Finally, if we go to, to my, my next slide, we need to bring uh, decentralized cooperation. Well, well, we need to bring development through decentralized cooperation uh, to the territories. For us, this is localization. We go with the, with the five P's of, of sustainable development, and we will add two, which is project and policy through the exercise we had with the bicycle. And um, this is super relevant since this sustainable development is based on people, planet, prosperity, partnership, and peace. These are the, the five P's that, that are the global scope. What we say is that through the centralized cooperation, we have the two tires, which is project-based and policy-based, and these lands in the territory. This whole bicycle atmosphere, this, this place where we are riding this common bike, uh, is what localization means for us. And it's a localization process that we need to, to strengthen. Uh, for us, this is not only about project and policy, but as well as public services. So I would add the 8P, which is public, since the public is back. And this is what we are doing when we talk about localization, is bringing public as, as a responsibility of local and regional governments, but as well as our common good and our common agenda. Um, so this is the bicycle of localization. It's a bicycle of multi-stakeholders multi uh, multi and, and partnership engagement. And, and this is narrative. It's, it's a political side that, that gives uh, our tires the possibility to keep biking, uh, which is narrative and, and the political lead. Uh, so I would leave it here uh, in terms of, of building the case around narrative SADA. I hope it makes sense and, and, and it's only bringing back localization everywhere. I know it's in the notes, but I, I think we need to have it uh, permanently everywhere since, since, since this is what we are describing.